so welcome. Um, thank you for having us. Thank you, Paul and Samantha, for organizing this webinar. What we're going to do is give a brief demo using a brief introduction using PowerPoint and then walk you through the environment itself and then we'll conclude with some Q&A. Um, I want to introduce myself. I'm Alexa Fleur. I'm a co-founder. And what started off this entire critique at experience was my need as a student in postgraduate studies um, doing writing, creative writing. Um, I was working on a middle grade fiction, his, uh, historical fiction novel and really was interested in the engagement that I got in person, needed feedback, but technology seemed to fall short. I wanted the same kind of engagement that we're having right now to be able to see each other, to get um, feedback on my work so I could um, progress. Um, as a graphic designer with my own company in, in branding, um, I had the same issues of the need to communicate with my clients to receive accurate feedback and technology was falling short. So that is how this project started, and I'll let um, Ashley introduce himself. Hello, everybody. Yeah, uh, about that time, I was uh, out here in uh, California doing distributed workflow systems uh, within forensics, so passing digital uh, evidence assets around the different departments and crime labs is what I was specializing in. Um, at the time, I was teaching adjunctly at a uh, Orange County uh, Community College, and what my experience as an adjunct faculty at that point is with the budget cuts, we lost some office hours and um, I lost a lot of um, access to facilities, uh, my office being primarily um, you know, the, the main one. And so as Alexa was describing to me the impact that uh, distance learning was having on her ability to collaborate, I was really experiencing the same thing, uh, kind of losing touch a little bit with my students as our uh, peer review and critique was being relegated primarily back and forth to email. So um, I'm going to give a quick, quick introduction on PowerPoint here. So what Critique It is is an innovative software that brings a personal human context to peer review and feedback and we do this through text and audio and video. Um, for the professor uh, this allows a dynamic feedback outside of class it helps efficiently manage and track your courses and through our st statistics module you can track student progress and the engagement that they're having with each other. Um, the human context is really important to us and for the student this means it's social, it builds a more interactive relationship um, in the learning environment and it's really easy to use and a lot of fun uh, when you're leaving video on documents and, and having that interaction. So when we were, when we were really looking at, here was our problem, but how does this affect uh, the university as a whole? Um, you know, really one of the things that we were very passionate about um, was providing a context for learning that goes beyond kind of some larger objectivist concerns. Uh, well, how do I make sure that you uh, know how to access your syllabus or that you know how to download this PowerPoint? Um, yeah, I've been profoundly influenced by the face time I had with faculty and professors um, and also the ability to uh, do that in an environment um, that was safe and that was secure uh, and that really made learning more than just um, digesting information but also being inspired by people and, and one of the, our stakes in the ground as a, as a company is to really provide technology that's intuitive and that's human and that's organic and that's fun. So within the learning environment, uh, we really see we're majoring uh, on interacting over a document. It's really something that we can add into a larger learning management uh, structure, um, and, and we do play nice with larger systems. Uh, we've made sure we, we haven't built this for another industry and pivoted it into education. This is built uh, with standards and regulations in mind, so we're very aware, very cognizant as we've been building of all the ADA, FERPA compliance issues. Um, and also as a cloud solution, one of the things that we're offering is um, a cost-efficient scalability. So, um, you know, we, we can grow with you and we can help take some load off of your IT department, uh, infrastructure, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So you'll, you'll, this will all become more clear as we actually jump into the product and you get to see it firsthand. All right. So let's um, go ahead and do that right now. So, Paul, if you could drag perfect. I'm going to show you my desktop and we're going to jump right in. takes a second. Hold on. Okay. 
There we go. And what you're looking at is my dashboard. This dashboard um, goal, the goal with our dashboard is always simplicity. So this is the one place where you can manage everything that you have. Groups, which can be personal groups. As you can see, I have a dissertation group, a short story group, courses, assignments, and of course, my documents. This dashboard belongs to me. No one else sees it. This is the way that I manage every all the projects and the collaborations I have happening. So what I'm going to do is um, send a document to Ashley to a, a dissertation group and let Ashley critique it so you can see for yourself. I've already preloaded a document here. It's a white paper. Um, if I wanted to turn it into a course, I have a little icon here to send to a course. But what I'm going to do is send it to one of my groups. I'm going to check dissertation. I could put a deadline on it if I want my group to get back to me at a certain time. And I can confirm here that one document is waiting in the dissertation group. We're going to switch over, and Ashley is going to walk you through. Let me turn off the hmm. uh, uh, Yeah, so. Can, um, Paul, can you guys still see us on the webcam? I'm just curious. I forgot to turn off the <laughs> webcam from the Adobe. Either way, <laughs> I think this message will pop up there. But okay. what, what you're seeing here is no webcam. Okay, okay good. Okay. We, we can uh, be free, feel free to tussle our hair at this moment. <laughs> um, so anyway, this is, this is my dashboard. And um, uh, let's go ahead and refresh this so you can see the update. Uh, one of the things that you'll notice is that we've borrowed as many conventions as possible from familiar technologies. We want this to look like a social network. We want this to look like something that students would use on their own time, uh, on their free time. Uh, one of the things uh, that uh, we constantly hear um, from educators is the reason they're teaching, and I can relate to this as well, isn't because they love technology so much so as they love teaching and they love students. And so really our goal is to get make this, this technology as transparent and organic as possible. So uh, anything that we can do to lower the learning curve um, we do. Uh, one of the things that you'll notice here as I'm jumping into this group is these, uh, I'm in 11 courses in eight groups. The groups are all peer-to-peer. Uh, -peer. The courses are, could either be fed in from a learning management system or things that uh, uh, the super administrator at my university has created. Uh, but either way, that's a lot to check in on. And so one of the things you'll notice here is we have something that works similar to an RSS feed where if anything happens in any of my groups or any of my courses, it's going to go ahead and alert me to this. So here in my dissertation group, I see that there's one new document waiting for me. So what I'm going to do uh, is just jump in and get to the business of critiquing Alexa's document. So here, uh, this is a new group, so there's not a whole lot of activity in it yet, but you'll just notice uh, kind of all the standard things that you would, you would think for course management. You can email the uh, uh, administrator or, or professor. Uh, you can leave uh, messages for the entire group. I can upload assets that everyone can download, not for critique, but for reference. If there's a video I want you to watch, some links, images, what have you. But really what I'm focused on is the image that's, or not, rather the document that's been submitted for critique. So this was a presentation uh, a couple of years back at uh, NMC, um, and one of the things that um, you'll notice is the um, basic formatting is maintained. Uh, this is a Word document that Alexa uploaded, and what we're doing isn't just imaging the document. Uh, we want a little bit more control over it than that, and so we're, we're uh, converting it essentially into an HTML document, um, and that allows us to run some of the statistics that I can show you later. But for now, Alexa wants my feedback. And so what I'll do is I can start by selecting a word, a phrase, a sentence. And you'll see uh, that directly above my selection, our uh, toolbar pops up. Now, one thing worth mentioning, as I had mentioned uh, ADA compliancy before, this is all run. This is all HTML, JavaScript. Um, so we're not reliant on um, uh, colors or flash uh, for any um, you know, critical marks or critical content. Um, so here I've got my, some basic proofing tools. Uh, we provided a basic criticism palette, so uh, we had a good time coming up with these. Um, been informed by experience here. Um, so, uh, and then of course for every uh, every criticism palette, there needs to be an equal and opposite praise palette. Uh, nice pleasantries. Uh, you know, we're fairly certain this isn't getting used nearly as much as the critique 
uh, critique palette or criticism palette rather. Um, you know, it's important to be able to leave custom comments, and um, I can do that here. Uh, this can be multiple paragraphs. I can type in whatever I'd like, and that's going to append that uh, to the paragraph in question uh, with my name, the time, the date. Uh, now, really, what we're we're majoring in here is wanting to keep this as human as possible and as dynamic, and so we provide uh, audio video as well. Now, one of the things that you'll notice here is that um, you know this. I think it's the Adobe Connect. Oh, I didn't. our video is on there. Paul, yeah. um, can you switch us back just briefly so we can turn off the webcam on the Adobe interface so we can then pull it up here? Um, one moment, guys. Um, we want to be able to see. Let me try to. Let's see if I can turn it off for us. Because I, yeah, I forgot to turn off my webcam. Okay, our light went off. Let's see if that did it. Okay, okay good. So I'm going to come down here. Word video. Let's see. There we are. Okay. Thanks for that. So uh, here we are, and you can see there's no third-party software. This pulls directly from the video camera. Right now, the video is a little bit out of dimension with the. Uh, with the frame, but that's just because we're, our screen's enlarged because we're, we're broadcasting here. But what I can do is I can, I can begin recording. So it's as easy as selecting a word, uh, hitting record, and um, this is going to go directly from my webcam and attach to um, whatever I selected. So I can go ahead and save that. And you have 10 minutes each time to leave a video, and you can leave as many videos within a document as you'd like. That's right. We've, we've had some interesting use cases where people are ex exci excited because they can finally make faces at, uh, at their documents. Um, but, you know, obviously we're not always in presentation mode. And I, I have to admit I did a lot of uh, grading in bathrobes, so um, we also allow for an audio mode. Um, one other use case that we can't ran into is a lot of uh, professors were, um, you know, they, they didn't want to be editors. They didn't, they didn't want to actually um, make the corrections on their student documents. So what they're doing instead is they, you know, attach the document, mark it up with uh, indicators, and then attach an MP3 file. So what we're doing is kind of facilitating that same workflow, but uh, being able to uh, regionalize and locate that feedback directly onto, um, you know, the word, phrase, paragraph, sentence, and question. So uh, this is just a little bit, but I think it gives you the point of how I can really quickly go through now and mark up the document. Um, one thing to notice is I never had to click save. Um, that all happens automatically, um, saves it to the document, and at any of the point, any point that I want to change my mind, whether the student has seen it or not, as long as I'm the comment owner, I can simply um, roll over and remove that comment. I know I can be a little snarky pre-coffee, so sometimes I have to take mm -hmm. that into consideration. So anyway, we'll switch back to Alexa now. So um, what I'm going to do is <laughs> go back to my dashboard because I want to see what critiques Ashley made on my document. Um, if we scroll down here, you'll see the little insert caret um, next to my document. That, that indicates that I have a critique, and I'm going to select it, and surprise, surprise, the critiques look exactly like they did. Um, that's the other thing. You don't have to manage who you're sending files to, because the minute that Ashley makes these, these um, critiques on my document, they exist. Um, I can view if there are multiple critiquers, like a team of five or eight, or unlimited, honestly, a large group. I can toggle through and view the feedback that they have. And in this case, um, read the text, roll over, watch the video. Um, when I highlight over the video phrase, you can see it highlights up above in a different color. I can click, watch that, listen to the file. Oh, they can't hear it. It's oh. on our headphones. Hold on. Oh, it's on our uh, headphones. Sorry. Sure. Um, you know, they, they didn't want to be editors. They didn't, they didn't want to actually uh, make the correction. Also, if I want to preview, um, save this file as a PDF, I can do that. Text comments go with the highlight that they're connected to. We separate the paragraph, and the comment goes right within the work itself, so you don't have to trace it or try and figure out where it belongs. And I'm going to shift it back to Ashley, because he'll show you how 
Um, this works with courses. So now we're in Ashley's environment and I'll hand it back to you. Great. Thanks, Alexa. Um, and uh, let's see. So here we are back in my environment. One of the things uh, we talk often about critique it as being a technology that's wrapped in an environment. And one of the things that that allows us to do is um, create workflow solutions uh, as well as track statistics and analytics. Um, and one of the things that I'll be getting into here in a moment is one of those workflow solutions. Uh, but first, uh, what you saw was the interface to a uh, group, which is a peer-to-peer -peer initiated um, instance. What we're, what we're looking at here is uh, as a view which is top down. In this case, um, you know, the instructor has started this or this is fed from the learning management system. You'll notice just a couple differences. Again, we're trying to keep everything as ubiquitous as possible. We're really after keeping that learning curve as flat as possible. Um, so what I've got here is I've got a list of assignments. Um, so this is working just like the, the group was, except for in this case, uh, I can um, create assignments and within that assignment, uh, open up and display um, uh, shared assets, uh, message boards specific to that assignment. Um, you know, in this, uh, in this case, you can see we have a distinction between documents that classmates are submitting for peer review. So, hey, I'm about to turn this in. Can you take a look at it? Versus documents that have actually been submitted for grading. Uh, so we, we keep track of all of that. Another thing that we're, auto we're automatically do doing is sorting uh, documents by their owners. So essentially, we're kind of managing the, the desktop, if you will, of this assignment for you. Um, all the interactions here work the same as, as what we showed you, but one of the things I want to focus on is the statistics. So really this, this is intended to be able to give you uh, a tool to take the temperature of the room. Uh, what this is doing is highlighting which students haven't either left a critique or received a critique. Um, you know, we found oftentimes that part of grading and part of working together um, in a, in a peer review environment is learning how to give critiques and learning how to receive critiques. And so what this is allowing you to do is to very quickly be able to say, um, hey, you know, your, part of your assignment is I need you to leave, um, you know, uh, four video critiques and five text critiques on three or four different people's papers. So we can, we can see this very quickly, who's doing what, uh, how active this particular assignment is. Um, another thing that, that professors often grade on uh, and I know that I did, was on improvement uh, instead of uh, just the state of the final document. And so one of the things that we can also do is uh, track, um, track versions across, doc uh, across well, <laughs> track documents across versions. Now this one in particular doesn't have one. Uh, Lex, I don't know if you've got one that does, but um, effectively it works the same way. I can toggle to see what this document looked like in December versus November versus October. Um, similar. I can uh, toggle to see um, what uh, any number of different critiquers had to say about the document, and uh, I can also filter on critique types. So I have a lot of control over exactly what I'm viewing. Um, so within this document, I also have a work pile, and my workflow was Monday morning was making a giant stack of papers, and the rest of the week was cutting through it. So what we're providing is a tool that allows you to uh, aggregate documents from all of your different courses, all of your different groups, and then be able to uh, essentially uh, reorganize them just with drag and drop functionality and see which ones you've looked at, which ones you haven't, uh, the location, who owned it, and the due date. Uh, I'm going to go ahead just to give you an example and click on one here. Now you can see this is a PDF that's been uploaded and uh, our critique interface uh, works the same way there. I can uh, roll over, watch videos, uh, leave, leave text, audio, video comments. Um, this also um, works for PowerPoints, though uh, at the current version of Critique, you need to convert that uh, into a PDF before uploading it. Um, but this gives you a sense of, you know, I can now quickly go, go through, see uh, what's waiting uh, on my attention, and once I've given that attention, I can remove it from my work pile simply by clicking Remove. So this, this is the beginning of a larger set of workflow and productivity tools. Uh, I think that the trick always with developing anything is providing the, uh, the right type uh, of tools without flooding our environment and making it needlessly complicated. Mm -hmm. So uh, the last thing that I'm going to show you, I know that we've got a lot of questions, and one of the things that we can do is switch back into the environment to actually answer those questions. 
But as just to give you a little bit of a peek uh, into uh, our sandbox, which um, you know is usually not the best idea as far as engineers are concerned because it's often laden with uh, landmines and bugs. But but uh, this is what we're working on currently, and we're excited to show you. Um, one of the one of the, the pieces of um, feedback that we've received is that. No, it's, it's great. If you have a technology, if you have a system, then you have the, a great platform to really be able to, to help users move through the system even more. And so in order to do that, what we've done is created um, a uh, what we're calling as a wizard. And so on every page, we're identifying the top five or six um, features, functions, operations that people are trying to do and providing a uh, really quick single click step-by-step um, -step on how exactly to do that. So we're constantly working to make this more intuitive, uh, uh, easier to use, uh, and that, of course, stands uh, above and beyond our normal tutorials, FAQs, and um, uh, get satisfaction feedback uh, tools. Uh, the main thing we wanted to show you, though, is the rubrics. Uh, what we've talked about so far is a lot of, I would, I would describe it as qualitative feedback. Um, you know, that's, it's great to be able to give guiding instruction, but really the other side of the, equa of the equation is that, is that more quantitative feedback, and uh, that comes in the form of rubrics here. Um, if I, for example, want to be able to, um, to create a rubric and then run some uh, statistics to see what, what we're using is a, a basic Likert scale. And if I want to, if I want to be able to see um, what um, um, student progress and be able to rate that, it's much easier to do that uh, quantifiably, uh, how many stars do they get, one through five, um, than doing that simply by, by reviewing uh, qualitative feedback. So here, uh, as you can see, I've already created a rubric. And it's really quite as simple as saying, let's say I want to say um, character development. And I can, I can either use the default um, Likert language, or I can say I can modify these to mean something different. Um, whatever that might be, I don't need to get too far into that. Uh, but what I can do here is I can, I can build a rubric. Uh, I can uh, customize this however I'd like. And then I'm going to go back to the dashboard, and you'll be able to see that just like uh, sending a document to a group or an assignment, the same uh, dialog box that Alexa showed you, uh, I can send uh, my rubric uh, to any course or any assignment. And so what that will do is attach itself to any assignment turned in or any document turned into that particular assignment. Just to give you a peek at how this actually looks, um, when I expand this, as you can see, I had this as the one I just built. I, I can do a simple one through five, disagree, agree, um, or sentence structure. Here, I added some more uh, kind of more specific terms. So what I can do as I'm reading is now simply go through, mark these, expand, collapse it as I need to, in addition to uh, any of the other uh, comments uh, that that we've already demonstrated. Uh, so this is what's coming up. Uh, we're also working on some social tools so that, um, you know, in the near future, you'll be able to pass your rubrics uh, between departments or between other users, uh, just like you'd send a document uh, to a friend. Um, so uh, we're pretty excited about what that means, both from an analytic perspective and, and really just opening up this tool to be able to do even more. Um, so I know that's a high-level high overview, but I wanted to leave, at least give you a sneak peek into the, some of the things that we're working on. I give you a sense of what, uh, what critique it's going to be looking like in the very near future here. So um, now we'll, we'll uh, transition back to the PowerPoint. So Paul, if you can help us with that switch off. And uh, before we open up the floor to Q&A, we want to just um, speak briefly about the process that we go through. Um, our, um, our utmost goal is technology that serves learning. And that said, we don't assume that every institution or even departments with institutions have the same needs and goals. So it's really important for us to understand your success criteria, your workflow, um, how the student and professor needs vary, um, and your initial budget. So it's, it's important to us so that we can work with you and in confidence deliver the kind of experience that you need for learning. And um, I'm, we're going to open up the floor for questions. Unfortunately, when we were giving the demo off of our desktop, we couldn't read the questions that were coming up. So um, we're eager to address those. And in the interest of time, I think one of us will be addressing just to make it quick. And, um, sure. So well, I'll... Uh... Okay, 
So well, let's just start at the top. Sure. I guess, uh, Carla, you'd asked a question uh, to the instructor. Uh, view shows a comment as a number off to the left column, uh, but students sees paragraph, sentence, comments, and line. Uh, you know, really what that's doing is it's, it's numbering. Uh, so, for example, if a given paragraph would have four or five comments on it, um, we're enumerating those comments so that they know to, uh, to click on, on that paragraph and investigate further. Um, that's what the students can see either in that view or in the preview, uh, preview mode that Alexa showed you. It really depends if their workflow is, if they're, if they're using dual monitors or if they're um, you know, looking at this on the screen or if they're trying to print that out. Um, because we do versioning and version management, the, the workflow that we have uh, in mind here uh, optimally is a student would upload a document. They would receive comments from their peers and their professors. Um, they would then uh, download the original document, make those changes, upload as version two, uh, rinse and repeat. And so what, that way, what, really what we're able to do is uh, track both the evolution of a document across versions as well as the evolution of feedback on that document across versions. So it's, it becomes more than a um, uh, kind of a, a, fin a por por portfolio of finished products and also a learning portfolio as well. So John asked, um, can you clarify how the work pile was organized and how you could tell what had been done with the document? Sure. Um, and Paul, we're, I'm open to any suggestions on how to, how to manage this. I have no problem switching back to the live environment, but then of course I can't see the questions. Hey, uh, <laughs> so, Ashley, this is can... Samantha. I think Paul may be getting some delays. Can you hear me? Okay, perfect. Yeah, yeah so the original right. intention yeah. was to do some Q&A back and forth, so I'm happy to, I'm happy to guide. In fact, um, if you, if you okay. want to switch back to the live environment, go ahead and do so, and then as you're, getting, as you're set up, I'll just start asking you questions. Great. Oh, good. That would, that would be excellent. Yeah. So why don't we do that? Okay. Hold on one second. No problem. You, excellent Samantha. presentation, by the way. I'm really excited about this tool. Oh, thank you. Okay. Can everybody see what we see? I guess you couldn't know that. Can everybody That's see? <laughs> can everybody see your ticket? Okay. Great. So uh, the last question was about the work pile and how we can tell what's been done to the documents. So really, what we're what we're doing with the work pile here is keeping this as simple as possible. Its primary fu uh, function is to, for me to be able to organize um, a stack of things that I have to do. What this is going to indicate is what group it came out of, if there's a due date, and what that due date is. And then if I've already done something on it, it removes the green dot, which is an indicator that this is a fresh document. So uh, as far as really getting into the nitty gritty of what's happened uh, with the document, you know, how many different versions are associated with it, how many critiquers have left new comments, all of that I would actually click into the document itself uh, to, to learn more. Uh, this is just a high level. Uh, organization tool. Does that answer the, your question? I think that was Carla's question. Yes, that was John's question, and I think that was very clear. Thank you so much. Um, and there's another question coming up from, from Carla. Um, what type of file does the download save in? It, does it match the original source, whatever the original um, format was? Yeah, that's a good question. So we're, you know, our top priority, because this is a peer review tool, is to allow complete comfort if I'm giving my document to Alexa that she can make all of the um, suggestions she wants, but she can never change my source document. So one of the things that you'll see here, when you're looking at, uh, at this, this document, for example, this is our translation of your original document. This is actually an HTML document, and it's for that reason it can be read by um, you know, screen readers, things of that nature. It's not an image. Um, so, so this has been converted to HTML. Uh, I'm a tech guy, so I have to resist getting too techy about this. But <laughs> we're, we're saving, uh, we, we save this in a database where we're able to understand and uh, track the number of comments that have been uh, received on each paragraph um, and, um, you know, kind of rebuild it as we need to. Now, uh, I think the the force of your question is, well, what about, what about the original document? And so when you upload a document for critique, we store that away and we save it, and we don't let anybody touch it. It's, it's, it's locked um, for all intents and purposes. 
if I then wanted, let's say that I'm working at four different computer labs at the university and I wanted to download that document, I, I open it up, I see the feedback, I either print that feedback out or I keep it on screen, and now I want to make those changes, what I can do is, down, is uh, elect to download that document, and that's going to download it um, in its original format. It will be the, the identical document um, back on my desktop. There's no way in our product, and we designed this deliberately to accept changes or to implement changes, um, really, our concern is to reinforce and to lead people through that pedagogical process of, okay, I hear what you're saying, I see what you're saying, I'm going to go implement that myself and upload a new version. So in this case, I would download the Word document. If it was a Word document, it would be a Word document. If it was PowerPoint, if it was RTF, if it was TXT, if it was DocX, whatever it's uploaded as, you can get that back down. Um, if I want to um, attach an additional version, instead of clicking the down button, I click the up button. And what this is going to allow me to do is upload a new version of the document. One thing that's nice about this is because we're tracking versions in a database and not on a file system, uh, it doesn't matter what you call it. So version 1 could be, in this case you see it's UWHF until we have faces, um, but version 2 could be called Strawberry Field, and, strawberry, and version 3 could be called Orange Tree. Um, you know, titles change, and I've, I've certainly fallen victim to very elaborate naming systems in order to try to keep, keep track of what, what's connected to what and what's version 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. So we're trying to save that pain as much as possible. Now I saw that Carla had an additional question attached to her original. Could you, um, it popped up briefly, could you please uh, let us know yeah. what that was? Yes, uh, she had asked, um, well, there's actually a couple follow-up questions. I just want to clarify. So the Critique It commentary saves into the download, correct? No, no, that's, uh, that is a very good question and an important point. No, the, the document that you would be downloading is the identical document to the one that you'd be uploading. Um, to, uh, to access uh, the markup in your document, you would be uh, viewing this in PDF review mode and then printing it. Uh, or saving it um, okay. as a PDF. Mm -hmm. uh, so one of the things that you can see here, and I know Alex already mentioned this, but just to reinforce it, is that because we're reassembling the document as you're viewing it, uh, instead of having to post all of the feedback on, you know, on the right margin or at the very as foot as footnotes at the very bottom of the document, we're actually able to insert it into the right below the paragraph that it corresponds to. Um, so yeah, the the document that you download is the same document that you uploaded. We're not touching it. Okay, so students don't need to download to make any changes if they still have the original document in their system? What, what they would do is take in all the feedback, go back to their original software where they created the content, and then make decisions on how they're, they're rewriting their next draft. Okay. Yeah, so, workflow, yeah, so if, if I'm working, let's say that I just show up at the computer lab and um, I download, I download my, the original document that I uploaded, I make the changes to it, I upload it as another version. Um, you know, you've effectively got two versions there. Uh, and then now what I can start doing is uh, doing a cross comparison between the two versions. Um, you know, whether I'm uh, the student and I'm just curious how much did I change or whether I'm the professor and I want to see, uh, well, well did, did she actually listen to my uh, critique of needing a more arguable thesis? Okay, great. Thank you so much. I think that that clarifies and that's wonderful. Um, the next question is actually, well, it's both a question and a compliment. Um, uh, one of our attendees says that the product looks really slick, which I have to definitely agree, and virtual round of applause for that. Um, but what is the mobile and tablet support like for Critique It? That is a good question. Currently, uh, because we've built it and avoided, um, you know, Flash and some kind of um, less friendly uh, Languages. Everything that we've developed is open source, MySQL, PHP, HTML. Uh, it reads fine on the, the browser, mobile browser versions, and uh, you know we we've tweaked the interface to uh, to make it fit uh, and be a little bit more friendly in that environment. So if you were to open this, uh, um, open uh, critique it in Safari, mobile Safari, for example, you would be able to um, navigate to your groups, courses, uh, perform any of the functions, submit a document to a group. Uh, review the feedback. Uh, right now, the exception is that you can access the audio video. Um, and uh, obviously, um, um, if, you're, if you're critiquing, uh, if you've, uh, the default 
uh, mobile safari mode is when you double when you double click on the screen it zooms in on the website instead of uh, you know instead of launching our um, critique palette so uh, for right now that's where we're at but we've got uh, actually a version of critique it 2 coming out and critique it 2 does have a uh, dedicated web application one of the things that we're uh, architecting there that we're really excited about is you know, it's great. It's one of the. It's great to have all of your educational assets online um, when you have an internet connection because you can get it from everywhere. But what about if I wanted to to grade from my favorite coffee shop that might not have uh, internet or on a plane or in a park? Uh, what we're doing is we're actually uh, building it into the, the the workflow that you saw or the work pile that you saw can be synced locally to the device. And um, what you'll be able to do with the mobile app is access the audio. Um, and video, uh, video camera of your mobile application to be able to leave those uh, audio video uh, critiques on the go wherever you're at. And then simply next time you get within, um, you know, a wireless range uh, or a Wi-Fi, depending on what device that you have, uh, it'll automatically sync up with the, with the live environment. So we're excited about that, and that's what that's what the mobile app will feature. Uh, meanwhile, uh, as that's in development, we're working hard to make the uh, mobile browser version just as functional as the desktop browser version. Well, thank you, Ashley. That's wonderful, actually. In pretty much every single Horizon report, um, the biggest trend has been that people expect to learn um, and work wherever they want to. And um, I know the NMC community and the NMC is really excited to partner with Critique It because, you know, this product really enables uh, people to do just that. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, the next question uh, actually is is just asking about um, you know transitioning to using the Critique It for a first time user you know let's say a professor how do you recommend integrating Critique It into the current assessment system how does um, well there's a couple different models and I, I guess a lot of that is based on the technology suite that you're that you're currently using um, you know what we've seen is uh, because it's a cloud system um, you know we could start uh, independently and very small by saying uh, we have we have some we have some scripts and some tools um, that allow you I might be able to show you that uh, let me see here um, uh, some tools that allow you to uh, convert um, uh, XML lists or student lists or student databases directly into the system even if we're not tied into your learning management system so if you if you're doing single sign-on for example through an LDAP layer um, we can re we can read that and we can populate um, you know the da your database based on that um, you know that's one level we also talk about integration which is level or um, integration which is level two which is a one-way path so if uh, for example uh, anything's happening in your learning management system we can we can pull that over into our system so we're not putting pushing information back in um, because we're MySQL PHP um, you know, we can work with any other open source technologies, um, you know, obviously Moodle being a large one. Um, if there are any more specific assessment tools, um, you know, we're, we're, we certainly have our ears open and, um, you know, are, are having strategic conversations with a lot of those players. So I think to get more detailed, but certainly Alexa would love to have that conversation and kind of find out what exact, what types of assessment technologies you're looking for and what types of interactions you're, you're looking to have with those. Uh, thank you, Ashley. And, um... This seems like this really boosts student interaction. Can you speak maybe to some specific examples of student experiences with Critique It and how it's enhanced students? Sure, sure. I mean, we, um, you know, one of the, there's, there's really two, two things that get us excited about this. And one is how we can scale student interaction in um, kind of already traditional online learning environments. And the second one is how we can really open up new opportunities. So a couple of cool um, scenarios, uh, case studies to talk about is uh, one, one example would be uh, foreign language, um, where it's very difficult to do any sort of foreign language assessment online, or even ESL um, types of, of classes. But um, you know, we, had one, we had one professor, and her case study was um, asking questions um, in English you know, or French, in this case, to the students and having them highlight, just like you saw us do, and um, orally respond. And over the course of the semester then, what she was able to do is by using our versioning tool, very quickly assess improvements in diction and syntax and uh, essentially oral communication. 
Um, we're having a lot of traction right now um, with uh, business documents, and I think one of the reasons there is because this is um, uh, business documents tend to be uh, performative in nature. Uh, so if you look at the way, for example, a group work over a PowerPoint is something that, that we've facilitated before. If a group's working on a PowerPoint, the one thing that they want to be able to do on the critiquing side of things is to be able to say, um, hey, you know, change this font or this text is too big or you know, reorder these slides. Uh, so we can facilitate that. Uh, the second hand, though, is for them to actually be able to piece together a presentation remotely. So I can select slide one, attach my video presentation. Here's what I'm going to say. Um, and then have my group member do the same for slide two, three. I jump back in on slide four and five, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, you know, what we've seen is both scaling interaction within traditional uses um, as well as uh, really trying to open up some more arenas within the university to um, dynamic online learning. We're really interested um, this fall semester in doing a study. One of the conversations that keeps coming up with professors is what impact can specifically audio video have in accelerating how a student learns to give um, critique, um, to do critical thinking. So um, we're looking to do a study in the fall with a business writing course where um, one class of students is limited to text only and then the other course is taught through audio video. So um, that's been a really exciting topic of discussion. And um, if the study moves forward, then um, we'd like to come back through NMC and have um, kind of an, an open discussion about that very topic of how audio and video can um, accelerate the learning process. Um, I had seen briefly a question pop up about, can we store comments for repost? Did you want to say anything about upcoming palette? Sure. Yeah. And, and another thing we, you know, well, actually, first, before we do that, is that um, did, did, uh, did those examples field the question sufficiently? I just want to make sure that we're, we're not. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think it. that there's, you know, so many multidisciplinary applications uh, that we could probably fill several more w webinars, you know, just studying the <laughs> The examples, and like Alexa said, what she hinted at um, with a possible future webinar, I mean, I think that sounds like a great idea and, and that uh, we'd all find that pretty compelling. So thank yeah, you. Yeah, we'd certainly love to hear more from, you know, the field and, and your thoughts on, on critical thinking and the use of technology. So. Yeah, well, one, one thing I get really excited about is uh, I was a, a big in, in philosophy, political philosophy, um, Fan, and I really enjoyed Habermas's writings and him talking about um, building uh, environments uh, through social discourse theory that don't just, it's not enough just to facilitate um, can I find the rubric and it's also really not even enough for someone to be able to see a talking head in a video but really to be able to generate uh, a environment where people are owning discourse, uh, that ownership is, is how do you create that and how do you create, use tools uh, that even if we, we never set foot in a physical classroom, or if we do set foot in a physical classroom, but we want our uh, study time and peer review time outside of that classroom to be just as real and dynamic, is, is how, how can we encourage people to take ownership of their discourse? And one of the things that we saw is some people are far more comfortable writing, others are more comfortable um, you know, orating or vocalizing what they have to say, and really the more ways that we can empower people to feel like they can have their voice heard, I think the more we're going to be creating learning environments that are dynamic and are, are things that students can take ownership of. And that's what I get really excited about. Um, so, but I know I can talk about that for way too long. So <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go on to the um, custom, question. well, the custom palette that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, one oh, of the the, things, yeah. yeah, one of the things that we're developing right now is a tool where, uh, you know, if there are any strings of text that you uh, regularly might write, um, that within, in Critique at 2.0, you're going to be able to, to save those and repost those um, on any student's paper. So it, it will, it'll look effectively as though you've hand typed it out each time. Um, we're also uh, developing a technology that uh, allows, allows a more uh, close integration between um, uh, text materials and the critiques that we're leaving as well. So instead of just uh, the critique mark for redundant or uh, comma splice or um, uh, anything of that nature. We're also now uh, building in tools so that I can um, either on rollover or via link 
be able to say, well, this is what a comma splice is, or this is what I mean by, um, a, you know, a dangling participle, or this is this is what we mean by uh, you need a, a more arguable thesis. Uh, so really building in tools that are taking this from simply leaving indicators and critiques to being able to amplify those critiques uh, with, without amplifying the amount of work that the professor needs to do that. And so the two ways that we're going to be doing that is one, exactly what you asked by allowing those custom uh, comments to be saved and dropped on any student's paper, and two, allowing you to amplify your comments uh, more easily with links, videos, connections, online resources, what have you. We're pretty excited about that. Fantastic. We're excited, too. So it seems like <laughs> lots of great things ahead. Um, you yeah. mentioned social, some social features that you're playing around with in the sandbox. Um, can you expand on that? You know, will there be any social media integration in terms of, you know, the big three, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube? Yeah, you know, that's a, that's a precarious line in that, um, on the one hand, we hear that, um, you know, students are really looking for an environment that's isolated from their social media. Um, wow. Just because it's online doesn't mean they want all their friends to know what's happening. On the other hand, um, you know, if I'm, if I'm particularly in online education, if I'm going to be reviewing someone's paper I've never met, it's kind of cool to be able to get to know them at least a little bit through social media, to see what their Twitter feeds look like, to see what their Facebook profile looks like. So, um, you know, after a little bit of deliberation and some market research, we decided that it is important to at least um, give that option. So we are going to have your basic uh, Facebook uh, Twitter, uh, sorts of connections. But really the main social component that we're doing is amplifying the user profiles. Um, so uh, we have some markups for this. Uh, this, is, this is in uh, also Critique at 2.0 um, level development. Um, but uh, what we want to be able to facilitate is right now if you look at the uh, student profile, I'm going to go ahead and just click on my name. It's pretty rudimentary. It gets the job done. I can send a message, I can write it, leave a quick description of myself, uh, what groups I'm active in, and that's a, um, you know, biographical, I almost said biological, um, <laughs> bi which I guess is kind of true too, but biographical information. Uh, wh where we're amplifying this is also I can elect, instead of just sharing a document with people in my group or people in my course, I can elect to share that with anybody that looks at my profile and um, turn on a, essentially a, a kind of a primitive rating system. Hey, here's three documents I'm really trying to get some feedback on. You might not be in a group, you might not be in a course, um, but pop onto my profile, see what I'm up to, and really just trying to, to very carefully, while still, still creating an environment that protects the student, that protects their intellectual property, that protects the groups that they're in and the courses that they're in, that still facilitates um, them to be able to share more freely without having to go through some of the hoops of inviting someone into a group and sharing with them on that level. So between some basic Facebook integrations and then amplifying the uh, student profile that you're looking at uh, currently, uh, that's really what we mean when we're, when we're talking about um, social amplification. Well, that's great because I have a, personally, I have a writing editing background and kind of knowing who the author is sometimes actually really helps you get a sense mm -hmm. of how to edit their work. So that's wonderful. Yeah, you, you want to make sure they don't have uh, any felonies. So. <laughs> well, that's too. <laughs> of course, yeah, that too. Um, but uh, hey, if a, if a felon's asking you to edit their, their paper, then clearly maybe they're going in the right direction. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> um, so I think we have a, um, a final question that I believe speaks to um, people's excitement about critique it. Um, is what, what's the pricing right now for it? Well, currently what we're doing, uh, the way that we usually start our uh, interactions with the university is via a pilot. Mm -hmm. And so that's a paid pilot at a nominal fee. Our average pilot right now is about $2,000 to get started. And really what we do there is provide, um, one of the things we found is um, it's beneficial to everyone to be able to really provide some hands-on training to the professor, so hands on some customized material to the university um, to help them uh, do whatever base level of integration they're talking about, getting their student databases ported over, getting those initial courses set up. So we, you know, we, we work with you to get the, the environment set up and to get you comfortable with what you're doing. And um, that's either a uh, one or two semester pilot. And then from there, it's really based on, um, on scale and, and how large you want to go. Uh, Alexa, I don't know if you want to, speak any, to any more details than that. Well, and it's really important to us that um, the technology serves the workflow um, that your department or that your group is doing. 
And we really have a robust support system of what we call critique at assistance to help the students. We understand what happens on the student side when they're um, interfacing with new technology and want to make the process as seamless as possible. So um, that said, it's very custom. And the best way to start off is just with a small pilot with a department with um, several English courses or um, groups that you have, and that allows us to understand what goals and success criteria you're going after, and then to fashion something that really makes it as successful, but as simple as possible for you. Yeah, if we're talking a larger scale, we can do enterprise uh, types of licenses, and you know we know we're we're still the new kids on the block, and so one of the things we're happy to facilitate, and we built the technology to be able to facilitate, is that we can grow either on a per license basis, or we can we can grow on a you know, let's do an enterprise deal for this department or this college or this university. So, um, you know, we're really sensitive to the fact that people like to, you know, kick tires and try things out and make sure not only that it works, you know, that's our baseline, but that it actually facilitates um, their educational paradigms, that, that they're not uh, adjusting their, their uh, teaching uh, to the tool. We, we believe that, that, you know, you have, as educators, um, have gone to the hard work of deciding what you want to teach and how you want to teach it but really to make sure that this tool is a fit. Uh, because particularly in an, as an early stage company, um, you know, it's really important to us that everyone that uses this tool and everybody that has an interaction with us has a positive interaction. Um, you know, that's, that's really what we're hanging our hat, our hat on. So you know, we're very careful to, to, to make sure that we can facilitate any sort of growth pattern uh, that you need uh, that's comfortable and um, covers all our bases. Um, if Great, and actually I know I said that was the last question, but a couple more trickled in that I, and I want to make sure to get them answered. Uh, is there um, going back to the, the privacy um, and permissions, um, is there a possibility for anonymous review? No, not currently. That's a good question. Um, a lot is, as far as the privacy is concerned, um, you know, we take FERPA very seriously uh, and just kind of a high level of what we're doing here. Uh, in groups, because those are peer initiated, all review is blind peer review. So if I've submitted a document to everyone in this webinar and everybody in this webinar gave me feedback, uh, none, everybody would see a blank document. I would be the only one that would, that would see um, any of the markups. So this really protects in a peer initiated environment any sort of cyberbullying or uh, inappropriate comments or anything like that. Sure, I would might still have to see them, but if they're if they're inappropriate, I can kick that person out of my group, remove those comments, whatever I need to do. In a courses environment, which is more top down, um, the uh, when students submit for peer review, uh, it's it is still blind, but when they submit. Um, uh, uh, or to turn in a document, um, that's a private interaction just between student and teacher. Now, the professor or the administrators, there can be multiples, um, at any point can go in and see what all of their student feedback is. So if, let's say that, um, unlike in a group where I never have any access to the comments um, that have been placed in the document owner's document, in, in a group, if I want to go in and make sure that Sue and Jake um, and Beverly are, are leaving actual constructive criticism, I can go in within that environment and audit uh, anything left. So uh, one of the things I brought up here is that sending the document to the course, you see that students have the option to submit that for peer review um, or to turn that in to make it a private interaction between them themselves and, and the professor or the administrator. Um, so I know that's the long answer. The short answer is no. Uh, right now, you are tagged with any, any comment that you, that you leave. Um, and, uh, but on the FERPA side of things, what, what we do is we can tag a student based on their student ID, their identifying number, um, but, that, but we don't display that. So um, the student could create whatever sort of pin name that they would want. They could change their picture and their identity two times a day if they wanted to. And the professor can always track and understand whose document is who based on that student ID number or whatever, whatever number that you set up. Um, so, um, that's, that's how we're complying with, with FERPA, or at least, um, you know, the, the primary sorts of feedback that we've gotten from institutions. Thank you. And just a follow-up, a clarification um, from the audience. So do the reviewers know who they're reviewing, or they don't know who they're reviewing? No, they, it's, it's, um, 
They do know. They do know. Yeah. So uh, in this case, um, let's see. If I switch to my profile over here, I go into that dissertation group. You can see I know that uh, a floor added this document for critique. So I do know whose document it is. When I say blind peer review, what I mean is if three other people, um, you know, left scathing reviews, I wouldn't see any of them. So I'm responding to a, a blank, uncritiqued. Uh, original document every time. Ah, that makes good sense. Got it. Um, okay, there's a couple other questions coming, but I know we're, we're, we're running out of time. So, uh, Ashley, Alexa, is there an email address or something where um, anyone with questions can Absolutely. get in touch with you? Why don't you switch us back to the PowerPoint? You got it. All right. Excellent. And thanks for facilitating that. That was very helpful. No problem. You know, technology is a gift and it's a curse. So, unfortunately, <laughs> internet uh, for, for Paul got a little bit shaky. So, if, if you'd like to try Critique It, please join us. Um, just go to our site at critiqueit.com. There's a request a free trial account. Give us your contact information. I would love to speak with you. Summer is a wonderful time to get your teams on, um, using the product, figuring out how it works on your workflow, and I, I would love to speak to you. There's my contact information there. Of course, I'm Alexa. Um, my cell phone number. Please, yeah, please contact us, and thank you so much for your questions. It's always so much fun to, uh, to meet. Oh, um, We'll be in North Carolina State next week at Computers and Writing for you composition people who will be joining us. Come see us. And of course, NMC in Boston in June. So we're really, really eager for that conference as well and look forward to meeting you in, in person. Yeah. And as a, as a, as a feedback company, we're, facil <laughs> we're facilitating feedback. So, uh, you know, we got to be able to take it too. So any, any, um, any thoughts, any questions? Um, you know, we, we, love inter we love interacting with people of our technology.